nervous. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is my first ever YouTube video on this channel. I kind of put a poll out on my Instagram page a couple of days ago and the response I had was really like encouraging and really nice. So I've decided to make a book YouTube channel talking about the books I've read, the books I've enjoyed, the books I've not so enjoyed and everything else that goes along with books as a hobby I guess. In this video I am going to be going through my TBR cart which is ever growing and I can never seem to catch up. But I'm going to do a tour of all the books that are on my TBR and some books that I'm probably going to get rid of my TBR because I know I'm just never going to read them. So with that out of the way let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so I have a three tier cart. Um, it is pretty full. I'll try and it's, yeah, and it's double sided as well. <laughs> Up on the top tier of my shelf, I have the books that I'm hoping to read this month. Every month I kind of go through, do a recap of what I've read, and then I'll make a TBR for the month ahead. So they go up in the top so that I can access them easily. For this month, I have quite a lot of fantasy. Um, so I've got the Caraval series. Um, I'm currently reading Caraval, so I've got the other two there. I have Throne of Glass as well. I am not sure if I want to read Assassin's Blade before this, so I'm not 100% sure if I'll read this this month. Then hardback-wise, I have Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I am currently listening to the final uh, Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I'm obsessed with her writing so I'm so excited for this one and then I have Alone With You in the Ether. I've seen a lot of people emotionally damaged from this so I'm gonna be reading this when I'm brave. Then I have Magnolia Parks. Again I've seen this kind of everywhere but like no one really talks about what it is. I've not seen anything about what the storyline is, what the like tropes are or anything like that so I'm kind of going into it blind which I'm actually really excited for. I have Folk of the Air Trilogy. I did try reading Cruel Prince six months ago, seven months ago, and I just didn't vibe with it. So I'm hoping now that I've read some more fantasy since then, because I was kind of new to fantasy when I first tried it, that I'll actually be able to get into it. So I just buy all three. They were from the works. I think it was like £12 for all three or something like that, which is a bargain really, um, as long as I actually read them. <laughs> then moving on to my second shelf, this is where I kind of store everything and then they'll sit there for months and I'll buy new ones and then these just never get touched. <laughs> I have, so these are all kind of romancy ones on this side and then this side is more fantasy. When Gracie met the Grump, I've seen this on TikTok a couple of times, not many people have spoken about it that I've seen. I haven't actually read any of Mariana's work yet. I did try from Luke Off With Love and it was such a slow burn that I couldn't get into it. I just don't think I was in the mood for that. So I'm hoping that I can actually get into the mood for a slow burn because I know that she is like the slow burn queen. Then I have some TikTok favourites. The American Roommate Experiment and Love on the Brain. I have read the first two from like these guys. Um, obviously Love Hypothesis. I enjoyed it, didn't love it. So I'm hoping that this one is a little bit better. And then the American Roommate Experiment. I didn't mind the Spanish Love Deception, but I wasn't overly obsessed with it like everybody else seems to be. It was okay. So I don't know. I've had these on the cart since they came out and I don't know if I'll ever actually read them because I'm just like scared of the disappointment. Then I have More Than Words. I absolutely love the books from Mia Sheridan that I've read. So I am excited for this one. I've not seen anything about this. Um, I'm very much a go into books blind reader so I'm not really sure what this is about but I've loved her books. Archer's voice was stunning so I'm excited for this one. Then I bought these two from the works I think they were like three pound each and I've seen them kind of people talking about them so I thought why not. I have something wilder and every summer after I know there is a second one I think to this coming out soon so I want to prioritize this. The Anne Honeymooners absolutely adored that book so I really do need to prioritize this one as well. Thousand Boy Kisses I have seen this everywhere and apparently it is emotionally damaging so I am scared to read it and I know that I'm going to want to read it when I want a good cry, like I want to feel every emotion possible. So I am scared for this one but I'm also excited. I think I might do a reading vlog of this one because apparently you cry within like 10 pages of the first of the book, I don't know. Bad Girl Reputation. I enjoyed Good Girl Complex, I did but I've not seen anything like amazing about this so I'm kind of like mm. Do I want to read it? I probably will, but 
it's not high on my priority list. Set on you, I bought this eight, nine months ago. It's just been sat there waiting for me to read it. I've not seen anything amazing about it. It's not something that I'm like itching to read. I will read it eventually, if I get time. <laughs> Where the Crawdads Sing. I probably will never read this. It just sits there and sits there. I might just watch the film and get it over and done with and then I can just get rid of this. I'm just not fussed. Playing Hard to Get. I got sent this one by Valentine PR. I really do need to read it. I loved Monica Murphy's books that I've read so far. I've read Things I Wanted to Say and A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime. Really, really enjoyed those ones. So I am excited for this one. I really just need to prioritize it. But again, thank you to Valentine PR for sending that one. There are no saints. And this is just like top tier floppiness. I'm excited for this one. I've not read anything of Sophie Lark's before and I see people raving about her. So I am very intrigued by this one. I just need to be in the mood because I feel like it's just gonna be pure smut with not a lot of storyline. So I need to be in the mood for that one. Neon Gods. When I tell you, I like did a little scream in Waterstones when I saw this. I was so excited that my Waterstones had this because they hardly ever have any like books like this. I am really, really excited for this one. I've read Touch of Darkness, the first one. I do have the rest of the series. I've not read it and I loved the retelling. So I am really excited for this and apparently this one even, is even better than Such a Darkness. So I'm excited. I'm just going to put all these back on the cart now. <laughs> okay, let's do the other side. This side is kind of ended up being more fantasy and I wasn't a big fantasy person until I've obviously read Akatar, absolutely loved it, will do a reread this year. That's the first like fantasy book I read and I was obsessed and after that I couldn't find anything that I kind of jowled with as much until I read Kingdom of the Wicked. I absolutely adored that series, it was like it gripped me, I was so hooked from that one. So after that I kind of decided to give more fantasy a try. And what I ended up doing was listening to audiobooks of fantasy for if it was like a series. I start by listening to the first book because a lot of the world building is why I struggled to get into fantasy books. So I listened to the first book as an audiobook, and from there I'm hooked. I know the characters, I know the world building and it didn't feel like so much of a chore to get through that. I've really enjoyed doing that, which means now I am a fantasy girly, absolutely obsessed with them. To start on this side, I have Once Upon a Broken Heart. I am currently reading Paraval, the first one, so I will be reading all three and then I'll move on to this one. I do also have A Ballad of Never After just there, so I will be reading that after this. Ninth House. I don't know what this is about. <laughs> I've seen mixed kind of reviews on TikTok and on YouTube of people who either absolutely loved it or people who just did not like it at all. So I am very curious about this one. Red Queen. I know nothing. I saw this when I was in my like buy every book I possibly see era and bought it and I have no idea. If you know anything about this let me know in the comments. <laughs> Bridge Kingdom. Again no idea what this is about. I saw it, I read Faye, bought it. The Shadows Between Us. I My friend has read the other books that this author has done. This is the first, I believe, in a duology or a series, I can't remember. She bought this one when we went shopping and then we went to Wagamama's and read the blurb of hers that she bought and I instantly went to go and buy my own because it sounds amazing. So I'm really looking forward to reading that one. King of Battle and Blood. This was kind of a, I've read Touch of Darkness, by the same author let's just see what it's like and i have forgotten about it ever since whether i'll read it i don't know this is i fell in love with hope i haven't seen much about this a friend of mine was posting on her story when she was reading it and it looked like it emotionally destroyed her so when i'm in the mood for that kind of torture i will pick this one up priest i'm saying no more about this from blood and ash I am scared to start this because I think I'm going to adore it, which then means I have to buy all of the other books in the series. So I have put off buying this. I do have two copies. I don't actually know where the other copy is. I do have two copies because again, my Waterstones had another copy, couldn't resist it. So I have two copies of this and I am so excited to read it, but I'm putting it off until my TBR is a little bit shorter because I am going to be obsessed, I think. Culty. I bought this one when I went to London and I visited the largest waterstones in Europe. It was amazing. This is my purchase that I made there. Again, Mariana, I 
haven't read any of her work I know that it's slow burn so I will get to this when I'm in the mood for a slow burn but I've heard very very good things. Ghosted, my friend Flo read this and she really enjoyed it apparently according to all of her social media and talking to her about it so I'm excited for this one. I again know nothing. I love to just kind of see that somebody else enjoyed a book buy it and make my own decisions. I tend not to go searching for loads and loads and loads of information about a book before I read it just because I don't like spoilers and I like to just kind of immerse myself in the story. So I don't know what this is about. I haven't read the blurb. I bought it because she liked it. It's that bad. <laughs> and lastly on this side, Promises and Pomegranates. I bought this seven, eight, nine months ago probably. I don't know. It's been sat here for a while. I will read it eventually. I know that it's a retelling. That's about it. Lastly, on the bottom shelf of my cart, I have random books that I know I'm probably never going to read and I've either DNF'd them and just put them back on the cart or I bought them and they've just sat there and sat there and sat there. To start with, I have Light Lark. This is a signed copy and I will read this eventually. I know there was a lot of controversy about this when it first came out because people were kind of like, well, you told us everything that happened in the book and it's not that good. But I've also seen people that absolutely love it. So I want to make my own opinion before I kind of just dismiss this. I will read this eventually. It's just not that high on my priority at the moment. I will get to it. Though. Happenstance, Tessa Bailey. She is queen when it comes to smut. So when I'm in the mood for that kind of thing, I will pick this up. Um, I've not seen many people raving about it. I just know that there's something about a gondola or something. I have no idea. The thickest is, it's a short, it's literally like 50 pages. And I kind of loved a million kisses in a lifetime i know that a lot of people kind of knew but take away a couple of the other things and i did really enjoy it so i'm excited to read that one mr wrong number i don't remember when i bought this i don't remember how long i've had this for it's just been sat there i will get to it when i'm in the mood for just like a cutesy romance because i feel like that's the kind of vibe it's gonna have it's just not that exciting to me <laughs> from luke off with love i have started this i think i got like 60 pages in and or more than that i think chapter like two or three was 40 pages long or something stupid like that and i just needed to be in a mood for a slow burn i know a lot of people rave about it so i will read it eventually i'm just not in the mood for slow burns at the moment the stand-in i don't remember buying this i probably will get rid of it because i'm not sure i'm ever going to read it i just don't think it's going to be my vibe acts of desperation megan nolan i think i read the first page when i was in waterstones and i bought this and that had me hooked so i will read this the soulmate equation i know that this is like popular i feel like it's kind of got love hypothesis vibes though so i'm not sure if i'm going to enjoy this or if it's going to be one of those that everybody loves and i'm just kind of like why it's there i don't know bunny I was really excited when I bought this. I kind of thought like, yeah, it's going to mess with my head and it's going to be something that I'm like, what, what's going on? And the more I see of this, the less I want to read it because everybody's just like, what the fuck is this book? And I just think I don't, can't be bothered for that. I can't be bothered for the head fuck that this book is going to give me. So I'm probably never going to read this. I will probably get rid of this. I don't know anything about this and I just think, I can't be asked to deal with the what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Educated. This is one that I bought as a book swap with another book talker. Um, I will read this when she reads Akatar. So Flo, if you're watching this, read Akatar and I'll read this. Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. This was two pounds from the works. I bought it. Will I read it? No idea, but I have it. Okay, let's spin this around. This is the last of the books on my TBR cart. Bloodmarked and Legendborn. I DNF'd Legendborn two, three days ago. I was listening to it on audiobook and I couldn't have been more bored. It just felt like it was a lot to get my head around. And I was listening to it and I just thought like, I'm forcing myself to listen to this. I wasn't invested in the main character. I wasn't invested in the story. I wasn't invested in the plot. I got, I think, 200 pages in. And then I DNF'd. There's too many books in the world for me to have to force myself to read them. I am going to be selling these. This is a special edition. I will be selling these on my vintage. I don't want to keep them. Then I have some classics because I was that girl. I was, I'm going to read classics. So I have Wuthering Heights and Pride and Prejudice. 
I don't know why I bought these. I really thought I was going to be that bitch and read classic books and like fall in love with them and annotate the shit out of them and be like, yeah, this is really deep and meaningful. I don't know if I'll ever read these. They look pretty and I've heard amazing things, but maybe I'll read them one day <laughs> when I run out of thing, everything else to read. Then I have Captain Cornelius Mandolin. My dad gave me this to read. I'll get to it eventually. Eagle of the Ninth, I think my in-laws gave me this to read. I'll get to it eventually. The Thursday Murder Club. I got this from a charity shop for £1.50. I've seen amazing things about this. My dad loves this. So again, I will read this one day. Birdsong. My fiance convinced me to buy this one. Um, I, I don't know, maybe. I am not ready for the emotional damage that this book is going to give me. I started reading it and I could feel myself already feeling like this isn't going to end well. So I put it back down and I did, uh, just don't think I'm ever going to pick it back up again. That is my cart. That is all of the books that are on here. I do have a list on my phone. I think I'm at like, I think it's 50 something books. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. At the start of the year, I was above 70. I've got rid of loads that I know I'm not going to read. And I've obviously been reading quite a lot as well. I did make a decision to only kind of buy new books unless they were in the series that I was reading or only one new book a month so that I'm not adding loads. So until this is like below, I don't know, 20 books, like a manageable number, I'm not going and buying loads, which is hard because there are lots of books that I want. I do also have loads on pre-order, so... I'm kind of focusing on just getting this to a manageable number at the moment. That is my cart. <laughs> it is always full. I do also have books on my bookshelf that I haven't read. Only a few. Um, Twisted, that came out recently. So that's just with the rest of the series because it looks pretty. So that's there. Um, Touch of Ruin and Touch of Malice. I don't know if I want to read Hades' perspective. I do have them. I don't know if I want to read them, but I have those three. I've read Touch of Darkness, so I just need to read those two. Then I have House of Sky and Breath. I've just finished House of Earth and Blood. Absolutely adored it. Sarah J Maas can do no wrong in my eyes. So I will be reading this one. Maybe I'll do a reading vlog on that one as well, because I've seen some videos of people like obsessed with this and the ending apparently i have no idea i have all of my hardbacks as well this is like my hardback section and all of these i've read that one i've read those two and i've read that one um there's some more behind as well so a lot of those i haven't read so i do need to start kind of dwindling down my hardback cube as well which i will get to eventually there's a few that i kind of just picked up because they were in the half off sale over christmas so i picked up a couple then um babel i need to read this as well so there's a few hardbacks that i need to get to so my tbr cart is mostly paperbacks and then these are all my hardbacks that i need to read foul lady fortune as well i'm looking forward to this i don't know why i read the first chapter i think when i was in waterstones and it's not usually my thing, but I was really like hooked. So I do need to get to that as well. That is my TBR cart complete. I hope you have enjoyed just sitting and chatting with me. I am hoping to dwindle down my TBR over the next few months. Um, I'm making a good dent. I'm trying to focus on books that I've had for a while, just so I don't feel bad about the fact that I've bought them and never read them. So I'm hoping to be consistent on this channel now and post once a week. I'm not sure what day that's going to be just yet but I will be posting once a week. If there are any video ideas that you want to see or any books that you think I should do from my TBR as a reading vlog so that you can experience the pain or the trauma or the love with me, let me know in the comments. That would be great to, to know what you guys want to see. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.